Okay, so once again coming through here, talking about our guys who ride around the river in a group every day there, the group riders are a classic, okay? And classically, if you're someone who rides regularly in a group, you'll know it's the same couple of guys who sit at the front every week, every rider who goes around there. So if you're not one of the people who sits anywhere near the front, the likelihood of your aerodynamics being important is pretty low. Okay, and with the fantastic technology we've got these days, watching the Tour de France, watching any of these big races, you can have a look around and see how much less work the guy in the right part of the peloton is doing compared to the guy on the nose of the peloton. And 40, 50% is a, a classic numbers to get thrown around. Are you guys happy with that for the right position, the, the peloton, 40 or 50% less work? You know, on the flat surface again, as soon as hills start getting steep, you know, there's no hiding from that as you start riding slower there. But that sitting in behind someone else becomes really, really critical. Okay, so once again, if you're someone, even someone who's doing road racing, okay, if there's someone who's just gonna be working in the bunch, their aero is not gonna be as important possibly as their power production there. So these balances continue to come around there. Um, I guess what we're looking for from the physics of it when we look at how high a seat is, where it is front to back position, is we talk about length tension relationship and we chatted about this a bit last week for those of you who weren't there, our muscles have a position where they're the most powerful. Basically, muscles don't like working at end range there. And I often talk about the bicep curl. Start of the bicep curl, you're not very strong. Mid range, you're at the strongest and you become weak again at the top. So when we look at different angles on the bike, angles at the knee, angles at the hips, we're trying to get the cyclist in a position that for as much of their pedal stroke as possible, they're working in a powerful position or an efficient position or a balance of power and efficiency from our sprinter through to our endurance cyclist. And that, um, so that's good. Now, we'll chat more about time trial set up and we'll get Daryl and Claire to talk a little about the UCI rules. So the UCI are the uh, international government governing body of cycling and they've got some, what some would call fairly archaic rules, but they are still the rules that govern how your bike can be set up. And straight away I'll tell you that this would be illegal to ride in its current position in a UCI race and it's to do with the saddle and that's just the starting point. So there's a lot of rules. So if you are setting up bikes, for people who are going to be riding in UCI races. And there's not too many in Perth. We've got the UCI coming up soon. Certainly all the track events are UCI uh, races there. But if you're not in the right position, you won't even get a start. So important things if you're working with cyclists who are looking at competing in those sort of things. Um, when we start looking at our time trial for our triathletes, we're looking at aero and comfort, very much so. And one of the big things that we do have to be careful with is making sure we've got enough weight on the back wheel that they can handle a bike as they're turning corners. So classically, a lot of the triathlons, there's not a lot of turning if you're in a time trial position there. However, if you are too far forward and not on a bike designed to be in that position, classically our people on road bikes who want to use time trial bars and they get right out the front, they can have not enough weight on the back wheel and that can be dangerous with cornering. And we've seen it with a few of the track cyclists who get too far forward. Their saddle might be in the right position, but they sit right in the nose. They go to accelerate and the back wheel just spins because there's too much weight forward. So, so many of these little things that interplay with each other to try and get the best position possible there. Um, and then the, the manipulation for the individual characteristics. And I, and I say to people again and again with what I do with bike fitting is, you know, it's not rocket science, a lot of what I do, but it's putting all the little bits and pieces together. Someone's strength versus their flexibility versus their injury history versus their pain versus what they want to try and achieve and trying to put all those bits and pieces together to, to get it right. And sometimes it's something that, that it's a bit of an evolution over time. I'll get someone come in with really, really stiff hips and they want to ride time trolling, they want to ride at the front of a group pack, and they want to have a low front end setup. And it's like, okay, well, if we put you on there at the moment, you're just going to get injured or you're going to get a sore back. So we're going to start here, you're going to go and do these exercises or work with us on improving your flexibility. And then as that improves, we're going to start getting into a more aggressive position. So sometimes it, it is a work of, in process over time. And certainly with our professional guys, our waist guys, our internationals, our British guys, you know, they're in and out of wind tunnels fairly regularly looking at power output, wind tunnels, wind resistance. The other great thing that I, I certainly should start to do with, and great or tragic thing to do with cycling performance is, you will tend to ride the best in the position you're used to riding in. So whenever you look at any research into bike setup and bike performance, if I put James on today and we hooked him up on his power meter and looked at his power output and I said, oh listen, I think your saddle's too low. So we bring his saddle up, we test him again. He may perform worse today because he's not used to riding that position. So, okay, so I'll test you in a month's time. In a month's time, he gives me better numbers. Hey, that's about me. Or is it the month of training he's done there? 
So it's always really hard to get good research. Unless you've got your professional guys who so you're literally testing every single day, it's pretty hard to get good research out of a lot of what we do in the bike fitting there.